Lots to talk about. Craig Council becoming the new Cubs manager, how that went about. Jonathan Perlaza not put on the 40-man by the Cubs, so he becomes a free agent. And if you guys don't know about Jonathan Perlaza, we're going to talk about him. The Cubs did add Luis Vasquez, and that's why I didn't have a video out this morning like I normally do, because I expected the Cubs to add Velazquez and Perlaza, and they only took one of the two. So the 40-man starting to shape up. What does that mean? What do those two guys bring to the table? The new manager, great story in The Athletic on how that happened. I'm going to talk about it. So much to get into here on the Cubs Baseball Channel, and I'm glad that you guys are here to talk about it with me. And I want you to be part of what we're doing here, and it's really easy to do. We want you on the roster, and to do that, all you got to do is like and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you like Cubs content, and if you're already a member, we appreciate that as well. And um, share. Tell your friends about it. Thanks for hanging out with us here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. We're brought to you this month by the Tennessee Smokies, the Cubs AA affiliate. They won their first championship in 45 years this season, and they've got the swag to prove it. Smokiesbaseball.com backslash store. All right, let's get right into it. And again, I'm Mick Gillespie. Thanks for hanging out here with us on the channel. Uh, yesterday, a banner day as the Cubs added Craig Council. And we're going to talk about Craig Council, how he became the Cubs manager, why that is a good move for the Cubs, and what that might mean in the future. But first, the video that I didn't air today was going to be a video where I talked about adding Luis Vazquez and Jonathan Perlaza to the Cubs 40-man. The issue is that Perlaza wasn't added to the 40 man like I thought. So I'm sure there's some other people that were surprised by that. And we'll see what eventually happens here. My best guess, though, is another team's going to come in and uh, they're going to take him. And the reason why is his bat. Triple uh, A Iowa last year, he hit 284, 23 home runs, 85 knocked in. He's uh, kind of a stocky, thick neck slugger. Uh, he can be clutch. He's a really good bat switch hitter with power from both sides of the plate and a good clubhouse guy. The The issue is that some people feel like his defense isn't always as good as it could be. I mean, he, he doesn't play right field uh, nearly as smoothly as another Cubs right field prospect, Owen Casey. And we saw what happened with Nelson Velazquez. Yeah, they traded him away and really didn't get anything in return a whole lot. I mean, I don't think Jose Quas was uh, a relevant trade, and I know some of you guys disagree with that, but, you know, getting a middle reliever, but at least they got something. If if Perlaza signs with another minor, you know, with another team and gets put on a 40-man roster, then the Cubs aren't getting anything for him, and he could be uh, someone like Garcia, was for the Rangers, kind of bounced around and then figured it all out. It's not like this guy's that far off. The problem, though, is with Seiya Suzuki signed in right field and the Cubs uh, logjam for outfielders that are signed at the big league level, where do you do, you know, where do you put Perlaza? And so that could be why he's not on the 40 man. Uh, so I, I was surprised by this. I'm interested to see what's going to happen if he decides to stay the Cubs could you know obviously sign him to a a minor league contract and invite him to spring training if he gets there because you just have a feeling with Perlaza that that a team's going to swoop in and add him to their roster and the Cubs had a lot of guys uh that they you know released yesterday sign with teams and and that includes uh uh Jared Young who's now a property of the Cardinals um, and that and that's what happens. I mean, I, I, I don't to me. I mean, I think that, that those are understandable moves. I mean, you know, you're, you're talking about players where you really just don't have a spot for them. Uh, but there were a list of guys who the Cubs, you know, obviously didn't sign yesterday and went to other teams. This was a guy, though, Jonathan Perlaza, that I thought for sure that the Cubs were going to add. They did add Luis Vasquez to the roster. So the, and, and, I, and I don't know you could that you. You just could not, you know, um, having a guy who 
would be capable of replacing Dansby Swanson at shortstop defensively if something happened to him is is really vital to your organization. And that's what um, Vasquez brings to the table. Uh, he, he batted 271, 20 home runs, 80 runs knocked in between double and triple A. This was his first year of really good offensive production. But one thing he's done since the Cubs really brought him up, and I saw him uh, as a 19-year-old playing shortstop for the Smokies in double A, the guy can pl- pick it. I mean, he's got great range. It's got the, the the arm. He makes the big plays. He makes the routine plays. You feel so comfortable with him at shortstop. He gives the Cubs um, – a you know an option as far as backing up the all-star gold glove you know caliber middle infield that they have right and so this one uh was what i expected and and obviously if you haven't seen him yet you're gonna love uh, luis vasquez when he does get there all right let's switch gears now and talk about craig council got the big contract yesterday and uh, there's been so many different angles talking about craig council and what this means first off They're saying that this resets the salary structure for managers, which got pretty high. Joe Torre of the Yankees made a bunch of money, and then it's kind of like gone back down. But part of it is the money, but part of it also is the the caliber of the manager. Craig Council was sought after. I mean, he he's the. He's the reason why the market went up. It's not that, hey, we're going to just pay like like they do with football coaches, because if you don't, you know, it's just and, and let me let me rephrase this. You look at the way that they pay football coaches in college, right? Nick Saban gets, I don't know, eleven million dollars. And then to to be competitive, you just got to pay close to that, even though if you could get the guy for half that price. Right. It's it's like that. Well, the market says, you know. Well, what happened with with baseball co- uh, managers is that the market was high and then it went down low. P- they, teams weren't paying, but part of it was maybe those guys weren't worth the 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 money that you'd have to pay them to have a manager team. And Craig Council didn't take the contract extension from Milwaukee, became a free agent, and then he gets to go around and and basically test the market. And he had the Guardians and the Mets where his uh, former boss is now in charge. And, you know, who knows who else talked to him. But when he became available and the Cubs were patient, they waited until after November 1st so they didn't have to ask permission of the Milwaukee Brewers, and they talked to him. And maybe that's why he didn't take a deal until that day. He probably knew that as well uh, because the Cubs weren't going to ask Milwaukee with David Ross uh, under contract. And then that ha- and that get out. And and so the athletic did a great story. And those guys are fantastic. They're the best in the business at, you know, covering stuff like this. And what they said th- that happened was that Jed Hoyer and him met. He didn't even tell. I'm talking about Jed Hoyer. Hardly anyone within the organization that this was a possibility. And then they kind of found a spot and met where, no, you know, it's not like he just showed up in, in Wrigleyville and came into the offices. They, they went somewhere else. They met and uh, and talked. And apparently the conversation went great. And then the class act that Jed Hoyer is, as tough as this must have been, um, he got on a plane and flew to Tallahassee to talk to and explain to David Ross that he was going to be out as manager. And that's that's got to be a tough conversation. And I'm sure it was heated, but it's just the way that it is. Right. And why why do you make this move? You know, we talked about it on the channel yesterday. But in the story, basically, they were saying, well, the reason that they brought David Ross in at the time, which was a great hire to replace Joe Madden, was that they felt like Joe Madden wasn't getting the most out of the roster. And when you look at Joe Madden and who you were going to bring in, why not bring in David Ross? I know absolutely no experience off of ESPN TV, Dancing with the Stars, you know, <laughs> SNL. I mean, you know, kind of a, a celebrity. But the reason you do that is because he had played with those guys. They respected him. And you can't not respect David Ross. He's just a fantastic person and he did everything the right way. But as 
things changed and you trade away all of those guys and now you're trying to bring new guys in and th- they felt like Craig Council was the best in baseball at utilizing the entire roster. And I think that's the biggest complaint that a lot of people on this channel had about David Ross was, hey, you know, we're we're not using the entire bullpen. We're not using the entire bench. You know, young guys are coming up and they're they're sitting on the bench and they're not playing. You know, maybe some of the lineups, you know, and then there's going to be a question, well, is he making the lineup or is someone else making the lineup? You know, all of that stuff. um, You would imagine that the manager makes the lineups, right? But it's not always the case. You know, the front office does it some places and sends it down. I don't know how the Cubs do it, to be honest with you. They're not going to tell us because it would be embarrassing if the manager didn't make the lineup, right? Uh, Or had a lot of input on the lineup. But you go out and you get Craig Council, who has been one of the best in baseball at utilizing the roster, uh, the the projections of the roster that the Brewers have had and what they should be doing and what they are doing, he over he seems to always overperform. You know, he's had three ninety plus win seasons. He's won the division two out of the last three years. Came in second the other season, and the opportunity was there for the Cubs to get Council, and then they made that happen. Now on the other side of this, Craig Council, who is a Wisconsin guy went to Notre Dame. His he's got kids in college that are in the Midwest. He's got kids in high school that are in Wisconsin. Apparently, this is his dream job, being the Cubs manager. And why wouldn't it be? I mean, it'd be anybody's dream job. It's the best job in managerial baseball. Period. It's better than the Yankees, it's better than the Mets, it's better than the Giants. It's the best job. Okay? even the Dodgers, it, because you're at Wrigley Field every day, the best fans in the world, and when you win, it is a big deal. And it's fun, right? Plus the day games. You, you know, guys like the day games. It, it, I know it's a little taxing on the, on the body. You don't have to get up early and do all that, but then you get to spend more time with your family. And I'm going to talk about Shohei Otani being – on the Cubs radar or maybe Otani having the Cubs on his radar in another video. So make sure that you check that out. But there's a reason why I think guys like having the day games in there. It really is nice. I mean, take it from me and been around baseball for a long time. It is nice to have those day games and then have a a, a night at home. So anyway, Craig council um, wanted to come to Chicago. The Cubs wanted him. And then, you know, obviously the market dictated the price that he got. And, um, now he's going to have to go out there and win. But in this move, it, 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 it just screams of Theo Epstein. And I think a lot of us <laughs> have been laughing because Theo was so amazing. Best ever at targeting elite talent and going to get it. When the Cubs got Joe Madden, it sent the exact same ripple and shock waves through baseball. And one thing that I noticed right off the bat with the Texas Rangers, when they went out and got Bruce Bochy, they went from being an organization that, eh, you know, might do okay to being a contender immediately and a real contender, like not a contender to make the playoffs, but to win it all. And when, and apparently when he got there, the first thing he said is, you know, we're going to try to win the world. We're going to win the world series. You know, we're, we're here to win. And that's what Joe Madden said when he came to town, you know, right away. It was like, well, we're going to be in this rebuild. No. Well, Craig Council is going to bring that same mentality to the Cubs. I think the biggest criticism of Council is that he hasn't had success in the postseason. So we'll see if that changes. I think it will. I think when you're successful, I think you figure you figure all of that stuff out. And you got you got the horses behind you. It's going to be a lot of fun. People are going to be amped up. So Craig Council comes to the Cubs in a Theo Epstein type move by Jed Hoyer. Um, tip of the cap to him for uh, for pulling off the, the biggest offseason coup. And I think that it also signals that the Cubs are going to be players in the market this year. I'm not saying they're going out and they're just going to spend recklessly. But I'm saying if there's an opportunity to get a Juan Soto, if there's an opportunity, and I'm not just saying trade and have him for a year, I'm talking about trade and sign, 
or Shohei Otani, where you're talking about elite talent, don't count the Cubs out. This organization's close. You got all these young players coming up to the top, and now you got the manager that I think is going to help get them to where they want to get, and that's into the playoffs and win another World Series. Guys, thanks for hanging out with us here on the Cubs Baseball Channel. Uh, I'm going to keep on dropping content. Again, sorry that the video was a little later today than than I like, but I was expecting Jonathan Perlaza to be on the 40-man, and he's not. So it kind of threw me off, and um, I had to make a new video. So thanks for being here. Make sure that you're part of what we do on the Cubs Baseball Channel. I'm Mick Gillespie. Go Cubs.